Now I've often had people ask me why do I keep pulling things apart when they look alright and just clean up the outside and paint them. Well, here's a good example. Now, this spring, okay, rusted on the outside, not a problem, could have cleaned it up, um, wasn't uh, broken in any way, I could have brushed the outside, cleaned it up and painted and put it back on the car. Um, but, when you pull it apart, you see why perhaps a little bit of extra effort would save a lot of problems later on down the track. Now, this is the rust, get a bit closer, uh, between the springs. There's an enormous amount of heavy, flaky rust uh, in between most of the springs. Now, I can clean that off easy enough, I'll just drop it in the vinegar bath, and I've already got one in the vinegar bath now. But, you know, if you don't clean them um, further down the track, um, though this is very, very abrasive, uh, the way it is now. So, yes, you'll use it. Um, this is going to start acting like a very coarse abrasive between the springs, and you're going to end up with problems down the track. Yes, it's a bit of a pain pulling them apart. Yes, it's dirty, messy, takes time, but in the end, you end up with a better product. So this one will just, uh, in the bath, clean it up. I'll put it back together, uh, lubricate between the springs, as I've said before, and it'll be fine. Now this rear spring has already been cleaned up. All the rust has been removed. Uh, I've killed the uh, remaining surface rust with um, phosphoric acid, so that's all killed off. Um, what I'm now doing is reassembling. Um, I've already pressed the, the new bushes, bushes in this one. Now for those that don't know, the um, bushes on the DB18 are threaded. So don't ever try and push the pins out because they won't come out. Um, I had these made probably 25 years ago uh, when I first started um, on the restoration of the 1950. Um, a specialist job to get them cut and they're very easy to press in and press out if you've got a press. So I've put new bushes in this. I'm now reassembling the, the leaves seeing they've all been cleaned up. I'm going to use some um, copper grease, not over the whole surface, but certainly um, you'll see when you pull these apart that around the ends of the, um, the springs, so around this area where the other one overlaps it, you'll see where it actually wears. And when you picture the way these work, they they flex up and down, so most of the the movement will be on this this end of the uh, the leaf. So I'll mainly put copper grease, a thin layer on there, and I'll gradually assemble them. I'll put a new bolt in the centre, and I'll uh, put leaf by leaf. And at some stage, I'm probably going to have to cramp that down, but at this stage um, assembly should be straightforward. And an interesting fact when I've been reassembling this, and the only reason I picked it up is that I've I've got one of the uh, springs from the 1950 model outside, and it's not pulled apart, and it just enables me to work out um, what goes where. Um, and I'd counted up the number of springs before this clip went on, and I only needed. Uh, two leaves before that according to the other spring and then looked again the wear pattern indicated that there was an extra leaf in this one and sure enough um, the spring on the 49 at some stage I'd say this is not a factory thing they've put in an additional leaf in the rear and the reason I say it's been after the factory is that the factory ones are are rounded and this one is you know, pretty pretty basic you know cut off same 
thickness, overall thickness, but it's an additional long spring put in. Now maybe at some stage they consider that the the car had sagged a bit, so they put an additional leaf to beef up the spring. So this particular car has a 12 leaf rear spring, um, not an 11 leaf as uh, as was standard. So anyway, just found that out then. So I've checked it out and. And all the other cars are 11 leaf, and this one, and as I say, it looks like a um, an addition because of the shape. But I'll leave it in. It's part of the history of the car. Yeah, the spring is as good as a new one. Cleaned up, preserved. Copper grease in between the leaves, and um, retentioned up. Went together reasonably well. Uh, apart from finding the additional leaf, I uh, ended up putting copper grease pretty well much over the, the entire inside surface. Uh, it was very therapeutic when I started, so I just kept going. What I'll do next is um, just clean off the grease on the outside, then I'll give it a bit of uh, epoxy black on the outside, just to um, preserve it more, and then it's ready to go back on the car. This is the diff I'm going to put in the consort. Now it's not the one that came out of it. In fact, this is uh, uh, one from my 1950 consort. Um, why am I putting this one in? Well, the reason is that uh, probably about 23 years ago, I actually um, put new bearings in the uh, in the diff center. So this one is actually in effect being restored internally. Now, I'd say that was 23 years ago, I, um, as with everything I do, I'll pull it apart and you say why, because you um, in effect restored it 23 years ago. The reason is that 23 years is a long time, I, I can't remember exactly what I've done apart from all new bearings and so on, I know that's been done, um, but I'll pull it all apart, clean it up a bit more, it uh, uh, needs repainting. The seals I'll make sure, well I'll actually replace the seals and uh, reassemble it again. Uh, I'll put this one in, um, I know it's uh, in good condition, the one out of the uh, car originally, well that, that's an unknown, so this will go in. Uh, quite a quick job, I don't have to do much other than clean it up and make sure the seals are fine. The um, only other thing, uh, and I'll just mention it, is that uh, on the casting, and probably can't see this, it's very hard to see, but, but in here, it's actually on the other side, actually has my family name cast into it. Now, I found that a bit unusual unusual when I first saw it, but I've um, been restoring a, a Ferguson tractor and found the uh, my name, family names also cast on the differential housing of that as well. So obviously the, um, um, the Lees family in England uh, ran a foundry or something, but uh, yeah, interesting. That, uh, that I actually find my family name stamped in the, uh, the housing of the, the car that I'm restoring. Now the spring hangers, I uh, used to think that you could never get this pin out but um, on one of my other cars I actually knocked it out, it's got a bit of a taper on it. Um, they do come out. Why am I taking this one out? The reason being is that the uh, original spring hanger bush is a little bit worn on the, on the shaft. Now I haven't actually got new bushes, but in this other vehicle the bushes are very very good. In fact there's very little movement at all. 
So what I'm going to do is to actually remove the this uh, threaded shaft and replace it with the one off the other car. Now how do you do that? Um, the way you do it is to use a bit of heat. Now I've already heated this up a bit. A little bit of heat around there and inside the chassis you can heat up the tube that goes through and it should without too much heat just expand it enough to be able to knock that out. That's how it comes out. Easier than it actually looks. There it is. Just held on by the bit of a taper. As I say, not too much heat. Uh, I've barely burnt the, the paint off that. And uh, just you know, warm it up on the inside mainly. And then tap it out. Obviously a lot easier without the body on, I must admit. There's no petrol tank in the way, there's no body in the way. So. Yes, I mean, I've got the easy way of doing it at the moment, but with everything else on, this makes it that much more difficult. But they come out. Okay, I'm fitting up the rear spring. I'm fitting it up, of course, um, just on the bare chassis. The advantage of that is you can get to everything. The disadvantage is you don't have the weight of the car to help actually um, fit the rear spring. First things first, fitted the shackle pins, um, not that hard to do, but you need to put the felt bush either side. Soak them in engine oil, fit them in before you slide the pins through, make sure they don't block the holes. It's a bit fiddly but you can get them in, a um, bit of trial and error, but you can get them. Just so there's the, the felt washers in the front. and. Um, as well, so in here, same thing. To fit the spring, obviously rear shackle in first, and then when you put this uh, shackle pin in, you actually then have to bolt this um, onto the chassis. Now, my spring didn't actually, because maybe it's because there's no weight uh, to help fit it. It was sitting out a bit, so I used some longer bolts to pull it in until I could actually get the the proper bolts in place to uh, to bolt it up. So rear one first, then this front one bolted up. Then you have to actually put the um, the U bolts through and pull the the spring up onto the differential. Now without the weight of the car it's uh, impossible to do it with the existing U-bolts. In fact that um, I actually had to make up some longer U-bolts and significantly longer. They're actually five inches longer to um, be able to go down and meet the uh, the plate under the under the spring. Now the differential itself is already sitting hard onto the chassis, onto the um, bump block there, so the diff won't go down, and you can't jack the the spring up without any weight on the on the chassis. So I've actually got to pull it up with the uh, longer U-bolts. It's coming up alright, bit by bit. The thing you need to be careful of when you're pulling it up is that the position of this rear shackle when I started the shackle pin was up here, not quite horizontal but not far off it. What you have to be careful of is when you're pulling it, pulling the spring up, that this uh, shackle doesn't push up that way, which is wrong. It's actually got to push out to the rear. Now the way I overcame that was to actually put a very large screwdriver in, 
and apply them on. Not a lot of pressure, but as I um, tightened up the U-bolts, I then pushed, pushed down on that to try and rock it backwards and um, after initial initial attempts it, it started to work quite well so now it's um, as I tightened up quite a few turns it comes up closer still a long way to go there's still probably an inch and three quarters there before it reaches the, uh, the differential but as it's coming up I then just apply a bit of pressure for that and it pushes that back so it should by the time I'm finished that'll probably come not necessarily vertical maybe back a little bit but it's all coming together nicely at this stage so I'll just keep winding it up and um, see where I go I have the spring mounted up properly I put the uh, proper U-bolts in after I remove the temporary long ones so it's all bolted up nicely. The uh, jack is also on the bottom and what I'll be doing is using that to hold the, the chassis up into place. So that side's uh, come up quite nicely. Now what I was going to do is to make up a mandrel, a little mandrel to put in there to help spread the rubber out and then push that in behind the mandrel. The idea is that would expand that to the size of the, uh, the shaft here and it would slide in uh, and, and fit in properly. Now I've seen that, that that's a way that uh, you can do it but just thinking of it I actually looked at the, the other end of the the shaft and it's got a slight chamfer on there so what I did is I I just put it back in the lathe and increased the, the the angle of the chamfer just not much just on the edge there so I thought well if I do that it's basically it's a built-in mandrel and it should just push in now that's exactly what it did do it pushed straight in from the back that's chamfered, it pushes in. Now you've got to be careful at the other end. I've um, got a couple of washers that, that go in there to hold the rubber from going through and also to stop the shaft from coming through. And what I, I did was just to mount that on the press and then press it in. So it, it does work just saved myself a lot of time making up a, a little device to help um, spread the rubber. It's in perfectly so I'll just uh, redo the others. So this is the next one to go in, all cleaned up, ready to go.